Mr. President, with layoffs uh, boiling up, could you assess for us the relative threats posed to the United States by the Soviet Union and Red China? No, I think it would be uh, a mistake to uh, attempt to uh, make that assessment uh, on this occasion. We have uh, difficult problems in uh, Southeast Asia. They directly involve, uh, of course, uh, the Soviet Union, as the Soviet Union is the co-chairman and is also, as I've already said, and is also a signatory of the Geneva Accord and uh, has assumed in the past a special responsibility for the maintenance of a neutral and independent Laos. Uh, in the Vienna Statement, which the chairman and I made in June 1961, committing ourselves to that result. We have also, of course, uh, had uh, conscious of the threat to the security of independent countries of Asia, Southeast Asia, which has been uh, made quite clear by the Chinese. So I would say that uh, we have serious problems with them both. We would hope uh, that the Soviet Union would make an effort to fulfill its commitments under the Geneva Accord, as the United States uh, is attempting to do. Mr. President, uh, there were reports from Moscow earlier today that the British and American ambassadors during their meeting with Chairman Khrushchev had presented a new proposal on inspection in an effort to break the deadlock on the nuclear test ban fee negotiation. Is it correct that, that the United States has presented such a proposal, and is there anything you can tell us about prospects now on this issue? <coughs> The United States have made uh, proposals for an intensification of the negotiations and uh, suggested some procedures by which those uh, negotiations might be speeded up. I'm, uh, have not, uh, I'm not uh, overly sanguine about the prospects for an accord. We have been caught really since December on the disagreement between the number of tests that should take place in any one year the United States discussing uh, seven, the Soviet Union three. No movement from the Soviet Union has taken place. In addition, there are other details which are still uh, unresolved. Not that so much the matter of, of uh, tests, but uh, the area of inspection, the means by which the inspection will be carried out, the freedom of the teams, what would be the composition of the inspection teams. All these questions are still unresolved. As we feel time is running out, the Prime Minister and I uh, wrote to uh, Chairman Khrushchev in an effort to see if we could develop uh, some means by which we could bring this matter to a climax and see if we could reach an accord which we feel to be in the interests of the nuclear powers, the present nuclear powers, to prevent uh, diffusion. But as I say, I'm not uh, sanguine, and uh, this is, represents not a lost effort, but a very determined effort to see if we can prevent uh, failure from coming upon us this spring. <laughs> Mr. President, back on Laos, uh, it has been more of a testing ground for coexistence since the Geneva Accords than in perhaps any other place in the world. Would you interpret a Soviet refusal to go along with efforts to maintain peace and the government of national union there as a shift toward a hard line by the Soviet Union? Well, I don't want to say anything that will prejudice uh, Secretary Harriman's trip, I think we'll know a good deal more about the prospects after he has visited Moscow. Quite obviously, we regard the maintenance of Geneva Accords as very essential to the security of Laos itself, and also, uh, as you quite rightly say, as a test of whether it's possible for an accord to be reached between countries which have uh, serious differences, an accord to be reached and maintained. If we fail in Laos, then I would think the prospects for accords on matters which may be geographically closer to us would be uh, substantially lessened. But I think we will have an idea as to whether the Soviet Union is prepared to meet its commitments and whether the other countries who are also signatories, which include the Communist Chinese and the North Vietnamese and others, are prepared to really see a neutral and independent Laos or determined to try a military takeover. And I think we should have a clearer idea of that after Governor Harriman's return. Yeah. Can I ask just one more question on Laos? Do we have any evidence that the Soviet Union is not in control of the ground in Laos as they seem to be in control in 1961 and last year when the Geneva Agreement was signed? Well, that I think is a uh, matter which uh, I think uh, time will uh, tell us. There was a direct uh, control because of the supply lines which were being maintained by the Soviet airlift. Whether the Soviets maintain the same degree of control now, whether they desire to maintain a, 
their influence and whether their influence will be thrown in the direction of a uh, maintenance of the Geneva settlement is the other questions which I think we should uh, find answered in the next uh, three or four weeks. What, of course, is happening in uh, Laos is a struggle between the nucleus forces of Kong Lee, who were allied with the communist forces in 1961, so that it seems to me that the very uh, nature of the struggle and the forces that are involved in the struggle are the best answer to the charges that have been made in the last 24 hours that it's the United States which has disturbed the status quo. The struggle is not between the forces of uh, Pumi and the neutralists, but between the Padet Lao and the Kong Lee forces, which, of course, are the army of Savannah Puma, whom the communists themselves supported in 1961. So I think we have a very clear idea where the responsibility lies. And uh, it would be a distortion to attempt to uh, place the burden for the breakdown up upon the United States. I think the world can tell very clearly who is struggling on the plain de jar and who therefore must bear uh, responsibility. Now, the solution is not to engage in a polemic or debate, but to bring about a ceasefire and to see if we can maintain what is a very fragile structure today. Mr. Yes. Mr. President, uh, how do you feel about the recommendations of the National Academy of Science? and also Professor John Rock of Harvard, that the federal government should participate actively in an attack on uh, uncontrolled population growth. Well, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm familiar with the uh, general thesis of uh, Professor Rock. As you know, the United States government today is, through the National Institutes of Health, give assistance to uh, research in the whole area of fertility, uh, biological uh, uh, studies, uh, reproduction, and all the rest, which uh, I think are important studies. And uh, there are several millions of dollars of federal funds are involved, and I think they're very useful and should be continued. I think the recommendations are that the, the, our government should take the lead and should, uh, should uh, participate much more actively and strongly yeah. than it has done before. You, sir, have never taken a position on this, I believe. Well, what is your question? The question is, uh, will you accept the recommendation of the National Academy that we should participate in, uh, in international birth control studies, supply of funds? Well, we them? are participating in the study of fertility and reproduction in the United Nations, which is an international study at the present time. Now, if your question is, can we do more, should we know more about the whole reproduction cycle, and uh, should this information be made more available to the world so that everyone can make their own judgment, I would think that it would be a matter which uh, we could uh, certainly uh, uh, support. But whether we're going to support Dr. Rock's proposal, which is somewhat different, uh, is another question. Mr. Yes, President, Mr. President, do you see any prospect for a meeting between yourself and Mr. Khrushchev any time in the next couple of months in Europe, uh, for example? No, I've never, I haven't heard any, and there's none planned. British, according to reports from London, are hoping for a three-way summit, perhaps on a test ban. I, uh, there's none planned, and, uh, of course, unless... And uh, it doesn't seem to me that it would be useful unless uh, we were in agreement upon a uh, test ban, which we're not now. Yeah. Would you care to address yourself to criticism <coughs> expressed by some Republicans, including Mr. Nixon recently, about the administration's attitude toward Cuba and suggesting perhaps that we're not taking as firm a stand toward them as we should? No, uh, I know there's a good deal of concern in the United States because Castro was still there. I think it's unfortunate that uh, he was permitted to assume control in the 1950s and uh, perhaps would have been easier to take action then than it is now. But uh, those who were in positions of responsibility did not make that judgment. Now, as to what uh, the present situation, we have, as you know, without going through the entire list, we have... Uh, and the other countries of the free world have cut the free world trade in the last two years from $800 million to 80. We are working with the OAS to set up an organization which will limit the movement of uh, potential guerrillas in and out of Cuba. We have uh, the OAS have almost diplomatically isolated Castro in this hemisphere. I think the members of the OAS have made it very clear that uh, Marxist-Leninism and the Soviet presence is not uh, a matter which is acceptable to the people of the hemisphere. We've been working through the Alliance for Progress to prevent a repetition of the Cuba incident. Uh, we have uh, made it very clear we would not accept a Hungary in Cuba. We've made it very clear that we would not permit the movement of troops from Cuba to another country for offensive purposes. We maintain their surveillance. We do a good many things. Now, we're coming down to the question, uh, which is rather uh, sidestepped. If that is, the United States should go to war in order to remove Castro. We don't uh, 
That nettle is not grasped. And it would seem to me that we have pretty much uh, done all those things that can be done to uh, demonstrate our uh, hostility to the concept of a Soviet satellite in the Caribbean, except to uh, take these very step, these other steps which bring in their wake violence and may bring a, a good deal of worldwide difficulty. If they're advocating that, then I recognize that as an alternate policy. But if it's merely a policy which says we should do something without defining it, except perhaps, as I've said, unleashing the exiles, which cannot do the job, it seems to me we deserve, on a question of this importance, a good deal more precision in our prescriptions for its solution.